Hello, garden friends. We've been working hard outside this past week. We actually took a week off school <laughs> to be out in the garden. The plan was to work in the garden during the morning, be doing school in the afternoon, but it's kind of turned into just a be outside week, which I'm okay with that. Uh, the goal was to get every plant in the ground as soon as possible and seeds so that we can just get this thing rolling. So today I have finished, almost finished up getting everything in the ground. All I have left are some summer savory plants and a couple just like leftover tomato, like baby tomato, baby pepper plants. I'm trying to decide if I'm even going to try to plant them or I'll just have to fit them in somewhere. So with that being said, the garden is basically 98% planted, which is like really exciting. And um, at this point is just where I'm kind of feeling like filling out where I can maybe fill out some things, put some more sunflowers in the ground, plant some more flower seeds, kind of where there's room uh, for those type of items uh, just to help fill out the garden with beauty and whimsy and all the things. So I'll show you what we've done this week. And then I have one more big project. Hopefully today is my goal to get it done, especially since the weather's so nice and it's supposed to rain the next two days. So let me show you. So here we are entering the what I call the East Garden and at the beginning of this week I think I have to go back and look at my videos this was almost completely well definitely the beginning of last week this was completely empty except for the onions and the uh, garlic over there some rhubarb and asparagus I had planted so in the past week I've gotten the sweet potatoes in the summer squash in corn and pumpkins smaller pumpkins in and then this week we focused on getting all the tomatoes in. So on this row here, which is 16 plus eight, it's 24 feet long from here to the fence line. And then another 20 feet long, 24 feet long here. And then another, actually ended up being probably 30 feet from that pole all the way down are in around the corner are lots and lots of peppers and a few tomatoes that I couldn't fit in here. And then it swings around here and I have more peppers. Now these are all my spicy peppers. We have tons of spicy peppers, which is really funny because last year I had more sweet peppers and not enough <laughs> spicy peppers. And uh, this year is the complete opposite. But I'm really excited about that because I can do all kinds of interesting things with those peppers. Like I have, um, bunch of cayenne peppers that I want to dry and ground. I've got shishito peppers, sugar rush peppers, some really fun jalapenos like lemon spice jalapeno, orange spice jalapeno, regular jalapeno, serrano, uh, ancho, gigante. Um, I'm trying to think what my other hot pepper is. And then uh, right here is a bunch of herbs. I've got dill, parsley, lemon balm, um, oregano filling out the front two artichoke plants which i'll probably have to take in side at the end of the summer because they need a long time like 130 days to mature <sighs> and then behind here is the acorn squash so i'm planning on putting a fence right here to keep that from coming into this space and hopefully to to trellis it so in addition to all these spicy peppers that I have in the West Garden, over here in the East Garden behind me is where I planted all the sweet peppers. All my King of the North, my Corno de Toro, my Jimmy Nardellos, Golden Treasures, Habanadas, and Natapinos. And I'm separating those because I don't want 
I want to keep cross-pollination between the spicy peppers and the sweet peppers uh, at bay as much, as much as I can because if sweet peppers and spicy peppers cross-pollinate, the spicy pepper will always win. They have the dominant gene, I guess you could say, and the babies of the two cross-pollinated plants will be some variety, some type of variety of the two parent plants, but will almost always be spicy. So I'm gonna try to save seeds this year from most of my plants. And so I just wanna to try to keep them separated at a pretty good distance so I can avoid that cross-pollination. Um, and I'll show you later in the season another way that I plan on doing that, using a little sachet bag uh, to keep some of the varieties that I've planted, the true variety, um, so that I can have those seeds for the next year. Um, this is all my onions and garlic, and you see a lot of grass and weeds taking over. I'm not too concerned about that because it's not really gonna affect the onions and garlic too much. Um, I may come in every so often and just uh, do a chop chop on some of these taller ones and I do want to eventually lay down some straw on all of this which will help keep the um, weeds at bay um, and I'm also considering maybe putting some sunflowers or vining plants along the fence line here I haven't quite decided that um, but for the time being everything here is planted um, and I'm really excited about that and let me show you oops gotta go on my path what we did over here this week really excited about my pumpkin patch. Oh, let me show you after these peppers what my plan is for today. So here are my peas, snow peas that are growing and then the beans which will grow on this arched trellis here. I've got potatoes and a trench between the peas and then I've got flowers growing here. Zinnias, gonzanias, and a surprise plant <laughs> that I don't know what it was. Somehow it didn't get labeled but I've got flowers all along here and then this is my sweet pepper patch. So I've got um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got 32 sweet pepper plants in here and then some herbs. I've got parsley, two basils, I think that's an oregano, and I'm gonna put this rosemary in here somewhere. So these should do really well here and hopefully won't cross pollinate with the peppers over there. And um, this bed actually originally had, I think it was either rutabaga or turnips, but they just weren't doing very well. And I was being, I didn't wanna waste this whole bed hoping that those root plants would come in, especially since it's already getting warm. So I just decided to say, forget it and I turned it all over got a lot of the weeds out that were growing in there and planted the peppers there instead um, and I was considering doing the same here but I am seeing a lot of carrots come up and I think I actually think these are the rutabagas right here that I'm gonna have to thin out um, so I may as the carrots get a little bigger come in here and poke some plants in in between some more lettuces things like that kale and lettuce and Swiss chard is probably what I'll pop in here over the next week. And um, and then as far as that goes, it's just all the cabbages and Brussels sprouts and potatoes all back in here, corn and, um, and then some nasturtiums I planted, cucumbers along the fence line, sunflowers along the fence line. And um, I'm considering doing some things along the fence line over here, I just haven't quite decided what. I do have blueberry plants planted, but only a couple of them are looking promising. So I may have lost those for the year and that's okay. So I don't wanna waste that fence line space. So I'm just trying to determine what to do with that. Lastly, um, I've been trying to decide where to put my big pumpkin patches because my children, my son in particular, really wanna have uh, big pumpkins this year and we have the space for it. So I was having a discussion with a friend of mine who grew pumpkins last year, who lives out in the country. And I said, did you have problem with pests? Did you have deer, anything eating them? And, and she didn't. And so I've decided, well, I guess I'll just chance it. And I'm gonna plant a bunch of pumpkins out here where the chickens have been. Uh, we just moved them this morning because they've grazed this whole area and basically cleared it. So we're gonna come out here and turn it and lay some pumpkin seeds in the ground. And I'm gonna do a lot for the hope that if some are decimated, others in other areas will make it. So I'm gonna do a lot of my big giant pumpkins in here. I'll probably do some over by my compost pile. Um, I'll probably do some over here past the uh, 
west garden between that and the orchard. And then I may even do some in the back of my house because we have a bunch of sun back there just to ensure that we get these pumpkins. And the other thing is with these giant pumpkin plants is you only get so many pumpkins per vine because so much energy has to go into that one big fruit. And if you want a lot of them, that you've got to plant a lot of plants. And um, I think it'd be fun to not only be able to provide ourselves um, pumpkins for Halloween and the fall, but also to be able to sell them at the farmer's market. So I'm gonna plant a lot. <laughs> and I don't remember the variety, I just know it's a giant pumpkin, I'll show you before I plant it. And then also I have that, I think it's called snow winter pumpkin. That's like the big white one, but it can also be blue, gray, green, orange, and there's another color I can't think of. So I'm gonna put those out as well. So I'm really excited. That's gonna be a lot of digging, but I only plan to turn the soil where the actual seed is going. I'm not gonna try to till all of this because the vines will just take over and do their thing. Um, so it may not be too labor intensive, we'll see. That's the plan today is to get the pumpkin patch in because those suckers need a long time to grow. And if I don't get them in now, well, if I get them in now, they'll have till the um, end of September and early October to mature and they'll have plenty of time. So that's the goal. We'll see if we get it done. I also should mention that I was able to get my hands on some wood chips finally uh, from a friend who was done with her pile. She brought them over. So that along with my wood chip pile at the end of our driveway, we've been able to cover most of these pathways. And I have some left to be able to cover up these, which is really exciting. So I don't have to stare at this cardboard all summer long. Okay. We are about to start the pumpkin patch, the epic pumpkin patch. Fingers crossed, it doesn't get eaten up. <laughs> I've got my trusty helper back here, you can see him. We're gonna put this on time lapse. And my plan is to dig a hole, mound it up, put three seeds in it, and move to the next. I'm gonna space them, the rows out, about uh, five feet, I think. Um, but then I'm gonna allow them to grow like 10 or 12 feet. And I've, I'm watching a practice where you can learn to train, ooh, careful, train their vines to go straight. So my thought is I'm gonna plant, plant them every five or six feet along the fence line right here. And I'm gonna train their vines to go straight out. So I probably about 10 feet out, I'll put another pumpkin um, and they'll go straight out too. And then I may do the same thing, maybe not today, but another day, right over here on the, on the other bed. So we'll have two really large pumpkin patches. That's the plan. I, if you guys have noticed a trend, sometimes my plans uh, follow suit and sometimes they don't, but that's the plan for right now. And so we'll put this in time lapse and see how much we get done. Pumpkin patch is done for now. We are tired. <laughs> We're gonna take a break, but we planted all the way down this fence line every five feet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mounds. And in between all of them, every foot we did sunflowers and then I went back and added silver slicer cucumbers. <laughs> So we'll see what happens. It's just kind of for fun. Um, hopefully the mounds of squash and sunflowers will keep rodents from getting too close to the cucumbers, but we'll see what happens. And thank goodness for all my helpers. So I feel really good getting that done. I have no idea if it's gonna work. <laughs> I think it will. I mean, I think if we've planted 11 pumpkin plants, we gotta get something out of it. Um, you're supposed to spread them out every 20 feet, especially if you want to get the big pumpkins. Um, I may do that with a couple of them. And 20 feet we marked would be about here from the fence. And so when we get some more energy, we may come out and do another row, I haven't decided yet. Or we'll just go over there and do it along that fence line. So we'll see, it's always a plan of progress to kind of see what we have time for and energy for. However, I'm really excited that we're even gonna give it a go 
that we may have a big pumpkin patch this year. And uh, that's exciting. So we're gonna go inside. We're probably gonna make some lemonade, take really? a break, take a shower. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see y'all on the next one.